to everyone. Welcome to all of you worshiping with you with us online this morning. I'm Reverend Alan Redford, pastor of St. John's Episcopal Church in Mount Vernon, Indiana. This is the third Sunday of Lent, March the 12th, and the liturgy for this service can be found on our website at mtbstjohns.org, or you can follow along in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 323. During Lent, we use Eucharistic Prayer 1 or Communion Service 1. And so let us begin. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <clears throat>
The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in their rock, as on the day I saw in the wilderness. When your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen me work. For forty years I will let generations to They are people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. 
Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and know who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked me, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman asked him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What? What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Or our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and went on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four more months, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and then gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
So it's a common saying that um, for health and well-being, we should be drinking eight eight-ounce glasses of water each and every day. Do you drink enough water? Lydia gets on me all the time about drinking water. Do you drink enough water? Have you drank enough water today? Especially when I've been out working in the yard or out in the heat or whatever. Sometimes she even goes to the point of bringing me this huge uh, jar of water and said, here, drink this. Because I know you haven't been drinking. And sometimes when I'm out working, I come back and I say, hey, I drank three bottles of water today or something. And she said, well, it's probably still not enough. Let me ask you another question. Is the water that you drink safe to drink? Or is it life-giving? I remember uh, I had come here in July of 2005, and it, uh, when we got close to Thanksgiving, people were saying, oh, you need to go out and you need to, to buy up water. Because Mount Vernon at that time was notorious at Thanksgiving to have boil water orders. And sure enough, that, that Thanksgiving, there was a boil water order. But then over the course of the next few years, the, they got all new equipment and everything, and those are a thing of the past. Now, we do have them every once in a while. In fact, there's been times when, even in our own neighborhood, we've had boil water orders, and Lydia and I, we've just been drinking away. And <laughs> we must have great immune systems. <laughs> I bring this up because of, obviously, in today's gospel reading, we have uh, the story of the woman of the well, which is only found in the gospel of John. And this is a story of life-giving water. But the question about this story is, was this encounter that Jesus had with this woman, was it by chance? Or did Jesus intentionally go to this well at this particular day, at this particular time, knowing that this woman was going to be there, and that she was going to be an instrument of evangelism for the people of this Samaritan city? And I also bring this up because normally Jewish people who are either traveling north to, from Jerusalem to, to Galilee, and, and onward, or those from the north in Galilee, the, the Jewish people that lived in that area, what they would skirt around Samaria and go across the Jordan and down the Jordan River and then cross about Jericho and come back up again. Because they wanted nothing to do, any self-respecting Jew wanted nothing to do with a Samaritan. And to be even considered a Samaritan was like a dirty word. So Jesus, he intentionally does not take this little by Jordan bypass. He goes straight down through Samaria. And he just so happens to get tired and stop at this well at this particular time. And we're told that it was noon when he came. And that the well was away from the city. In, in those days, most often the well, the, you know, they would dig a well and then they would build a city around the well. But this is a situation where the city was actually away from the well. The women would all go together either early of the morning or late uh, in the evening, in the cool of the morning or cool of the evening, to go draw water from this well. And so it was kind of strange for this woman to be drawing water in the heat of the day, at the noonday. And so again, you know, you just got to wonder, is it coincidence or was Jesus actually there uh, to meet that woman? But the reason that she was there was because of her husband's situation, that she was kind of considered a woman of ill repute and... Um, the other women did not want to necessarily associate with her. But I would say despite whatever flaws that the other women and other people may have found in this woman, that from this story we discover that she is a woman of faith, that she knows her Bible or she knows her scrolls. And I would also uh, 
from just a geeky point of view, point out that um, <clears throat> there's kind of a difference in uh, the worship of the people from the Judea, Jerusalem area, and from those in the Samaria or the Northern Kingdom area, <clears throat> that those in the north uh, tend to lean more towards uh, the Moses and uh, his commandments and uh, Elijah and those stories that come from from those stories and not anything really that has to do with King David stories and those kinds of things. So she knows the, the law and the worship of, of her people. And so she gets into this, this debate with Jesus about where should we worship, that our ancestors worshiped here uh, on this mountain in our place, but you say that the only place valid where worship is valid to God is in Jerusalem. And Jesus says, you know, the time's going to come where it doesn't make a difference where you worship. And uh, because God is spirit, and wherever you find God, worship God there. She also, I would say also that uh, there's this, that Jesus sees her heart and not the sin, you know, that on the outside that the people see. There's also this question about, she turns to Jesus and says, well, you, you don't have any bucket, you don't have any way, and this well is deep. The question of Jesus about this, the depth of the well, is a question of the depth of her soul. How, and I refer back to last week's story about Nicodemus coming to Jesus, that Nicodemus was looking something more, for something more in life than what was just around him. And here is a woman that she is seeking more out of life than just her existence, her day-to-day -day life. I would also point out that in all of this story, that water is just a metaphor. That Jesus said to the woman, I will always, I will give you this water, this living water of life. And what you seek, you know, that if you drink this water out of this well, that you're going to continue to be thirsty. But I'm going to give you, or can give you, this water that wells up and gushes up into eternal life. So having heard all of this uh, that Jesus has to say, she abandons her jar and she goes back to the city. And again, this is another metaphor, that jar being left behind. It's a signal that she is ready to leave behind her old life and because she has now found the Messiah. She's that's kind of like that pearl of great price. That she has found that, and she is now ready to go and uh, and proclaim that. So then she goes and she finds uh, the people, tells them all about it, and then they come, and she is a vehicle for them coming to find Jesus. I'll ask the question again: Is the water you drink safe, and is it life giving? As Jesus says. You can drink all the real water that you want, and you're always going to be thirsty. But accepting the spiritual water that Jesus offers brings new life, brings eternal life. The world is full of thirsty people. They thirst for water, but more importantly, they thirst for Jesus. Do you know somebody in your life who is thirsty for Jesus? Are you willing to show them the well of eternal life? Amen.
let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in your holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto your divine majesty, beseeching you to inspire continually the universal church with your spirit of truth, unity, and comfort. And grant that all those who do confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. We pray this week for the Church of South India, in the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, in St. Paul's Jeffersonville, Mr. Ben Sapp, Senior Warden, in the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer. We also offer prayer for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Brasilia, and the Bishop Mauricio, and for a partnership with St. Andrews and Tom in the Episcopal Diocese of Haiti. And to all your people give your heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive your holy word, truly serving you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech you also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and the peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, they may honor you with their substance and be faithful stewards of your bounty. We especially give thanks for the birthday of Bill Gooden. We also give thanks for Willow Tree and their work to support women who are victims of domestic violence. Are there any additional thanksgivings? Thanks for all the birthday wishes I received yesterday. For God's continued protection and healing. And we most humbly beseech you of your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We especially pray for those who are ill, Quincy Fitzgerald, Judy, Grant McLaughlin, and Bobby Harper. 
We also pray for those with special needs. The Sobics, Nick, Doris Curtin, Margaret Rutherford, Chad and Will and the Will families, the people of East Palestine, Ohio, the people of Turkey, and all dealing with the aftermath of the earthquakes. Ron Stover, Julie, Mike Timmons, Joe Brenner, Susan and Bill Gooden, Leon and Della, Stephen and Carrie Grubbs, the Rainey family, the Marker family, and Austin. And we also bless your holy name for all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear. Remember today, Jan Marker and James Smokey Rainey. Beseeching you to grant them continual growth in your love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. John, all your saints, that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. our sins as Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved Thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of God's Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with mighty and hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn unto him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. <laughs>
coming up in a couple weeks on the 26th, we're going to have a service of healing and also uh, after the service, to, after we all get healed, we're going to go outside and do some uh, spring cleanup work. I'm sitting here wondering with the time change, how many people are going to show up at, uh, at the end of this service, uh, thinking they're on time. We uh, have a Lenten outreach uh, project that we do every year. We collect money for a global mission, and this year we are raising money to buy fruit trees uh, through World Vision. And each $27 donation buys a set of three uh, trees, and our goal is to do 40 trees uh, for a total of $1,080, and I think we're up to about over $600 uh, or so. So we're uh, in good shape to reach our goal by Easter. So if you are watching online, if you would like to uh, donate to that, you can go to our website and click on the, the PayPal button, and those donations will go to our Lenten project. Also, uh, we collect uh, items for our local food pantry uh, each month, and this month we're uh, collecting canned foods. You can also make a donation uh, for uh, those items to go to the River Bend Food Pantry here in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Are there other, any other Thanksgivings, or uh, not Thanksgivings, any announcements this morning? <laughs> If not, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we use Eucharistic Prayer 1, found on page 333. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, our Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who does bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Reasonable, 
holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
life. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee, for thou hast pleased us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus to share us thereby of thy favor and visual forces, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all the people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us by thy grace, that we may continue in thy holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your holy family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.